All right. <clears throat> so um, just real quick, we're going to go over some properties and definitions just to get you set for the notes we're going to take. So we're still going to use all of these same properties. So we still have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, distributive, substitution, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So all of those are still going to be part of what we are doing, except now we are going to also look at the properties of congruence, all right? So how it works is very similar. So the reflexive property still is gonna be when they're equal to each other, but this time it's when they're congruent. So AB is congruent to AB. So that is not going to change. Symmetric still works the same way. We're still gonna flip. So segment AB is congruent to segment CD, then CD is congruent to segment AB. And the transitive property will work the same also. If segment AB is congruent to segment CD and CD is congruent to EF, then AB is congruent to EF just like before, okay? So the only thing that's different is the congruent symbol, but that will change depending on what you are doing, okay? So the definition of congruence, we know that if something's congruent, we know it's equal. If it's equal, we know it's congruent. Well, there's actually a theorem for that or a definition. So if AB is congruent to CD, then AB is equal to CD. And it also works in reverse. If AB is equal to CD, then it is also congruent, okay? And that will always be that way, um, and you're gonna use it a lot. And it'll seem awkward at first, but the more you go, the more it will become familiar, okay? Definition of a midpoint. A midpoint still works exactly the same as it did the first week of school when we did midpoint. So it says the midpoint of a segment divides the segment into two equal or congruent parts. So if M is the midpoint of AB, so just like before, if we have segment AB and we place a midpoint on it, then we know AM is congruent to MB. So AM is congruent or is equal. So AM is equal to MB. So we know they are equal. And just like before, with your segment addition, if the points are collinear, meaning they're on the same line, and B is between two points, then we know AB plus BC is equal to AC. It's still going to be part plus part equals whole. Okay? So that's just, we're going to use, these are, these are going to be your reasons. All of these things are going to be reasons when you start writing your segment proofs. Okay? Now, on the other side, there's really not a lot for you to fill out. This is just more or less for you um, as, a, as a reference, as it's titled. We still have all of the same properties, all of the same properties. It works exactly the same as it does with segments. It's just this time it's with angles. So now the definition of congruence, the measure of an angle is equal to the measure of an angle if and only if they are congruent. Same exact thing. Definition of an angle bisector, just like a midpoint. An angle bisector divides an angle into two equal parts. So if I have angle A, B, C, and I draw a ray BD, then I know angle ABD is congruent to angle DBC, okay? Complementary, complementary, if and only if, the sum is 90, two angles that add up to 90. Supplementary, two angles that add up to 180. Again, guys, these are all going to be reasons when we're writing our proofs. The definition of perpendicular. Perpendicular lines form right angles. So remember that perpendicular makes a right angle. So if this line is perpendicular to this line, they're going to make a right angle, okay? So complementary, let's go back for a second. A plus B equals 90. Um, supplementary is when A plus B equals 180. And remember, A and B are just variables. They could be anything I want them to be. Perpendicular, this is the symbol for perpendicular. 
And the definition of a right angle is that a right angle equals 90. Okay, now, postulates are also going to be used as reasons. The angle addition postulate, just like segment addition, is still going to be part plus part equals whole. And then theorems. Theorems are also going to be reasons. So just like before, your vertical angles. Don't forget, vertical angles are created by two intersecting lines. So angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. The complement theorem, okay, remember complementary is A plus B equals 90. The complement theorem says if two angles form a right angle, then they are complementary. Supplement theorem, if two angles form a linear pair. So the difference between the theorem and actually being complementary or supplementary is the word form a right angle, form a linear pair. So if I form a right angle, angle one plus angle two, form a right angle, therefore they are complementary. Forms a linear pair. So if I have a line and I draw an angle, so angle three and angle four are supplementary because they form a linear pair. Now the congruent complements theorem, if A is complementary to B and C, so in other words, angle A plus angle B is equal to 90, angle A plus angle C equals 90, because it's saying that A is complementary to both, then that means A is equal to C. Oh, I just did that completely backwards. Hang on a minute, let me fix this one. All right, let me start over. If A is complementary to B, okay, and C is also complementary to B, I read that wrong. So A plus B is 90, and C plus B is 90, then that means A and C have to be the same angle because they're both being added to B. So therefore, angle A is equal to angle C. The supplement theorem works the same way. Sorry about that, guys. If you get confused, star it. We'll talk about it more in class. If A is supplementary to B, so if A is supplementary to B, and C is supplementary to B, then again, angle A is going to be equal to angle C because they're going to be added to the same number. So for example, if I said 20 plus 160 equals 180, and then I said angle C plus 160 equals 180, then we know that angle C is equal to 20, which would be A and C being the same thing. All right, please star anything. I'm sorry if I confused you on that one. We'll talk about them more, and we're going to do a bulk of the notes in class. So I will see you guys next time. Please come prepared. Have a good day.